when uh, I retired from rugby, I was getting worried about starting to play with guys who were born after I left school. Well, even more depressingly, I'm about to interview a gentleman here who I had started to play for Leinster before he was born. Uh, Robbie Henshaw, thanks for coming along. Thanks for having me. Cheers. Yes, so that is very depressing, yeah, how long I am out of rugby and haven't been playing. Uh, so listen, let's go right back down to it. Uh, rugby wasn't your first sport, was it? You were kind of country boy, Gaelic, with a yeah. little bit of hurling involved, was there at all? A small bit of hurling, more, more so Gaelic. Um, I, was, I was more, I started as my first sport and then kind of rugby, I kind of integrated into it a couple of years after when yeah. And I picked up the bit of hand-eye coordination, and when I, when I got kind of steady on my feet at, at sports, so it was Gaelic, yeah, kind of, kind of from a country background as well. Right. I always, always had a had a ball in the backyard, you know. Now, was was your what are your six foot three and a bit? Is it? Yeah, it's about six ben, foot ben three. written in the program. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, was that a late spurt, or did you have a little time in the forwards first, or were you always out with the girls out the backs? What way did that work out? I'm not going to lie. I was actually a bit short until I was about 15, mm. and I had a late spurt then uh, to to hit six foot. And right. yeah, so I was I was actually quite uh, short and a little bit tubby. So I, I kind of <laughs> yeah, I know, I know that feeling. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I, I mixed. Uh, I actually ended up playing a little bit in the back. Row, oh, right. um, played a little bit number eight, and always played kind of full back as well, and, and a bit in the centre as well. So I kind of mixed and matched of uh, different different positions. Oh, that's all right. We can respect you even more now. You've played a little bit in the forwards. That's okay. Yeah. So when did it start to click? You, you you won the schools cup. Won the schools cup, yeah. Um, and did you go straight straight into the squads after that? You you played uh, Ireland schools, didn't you? Yeah, played Ireland schools, and that was kind of mm, kind of my eye opener to. To maybe going on to to pursue an academy contract, I think yeah. I, I ended up getting a, a school's cap, and and we won the fair competition in in Lourdes in France, yeah. and that was kind of that was the whole the kickstart of it all. And then the the following year we won the senior cup, um, which hadn't been won in 35 years, and yeah. there was um yeah it was just a really good time. And then the year after that that following on, then I I went into the academy, and um, it was kind of kind of dr dr like brought through really, really rapidly yeah. to um, Eric Elwood's squad and um, kind of haven't looked yeah. back. Obviously, you got into the Irish squad. You were there for a very short time and then you managed to get on. It was against the US, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 And like, that must have been, like, you know, for, for old gits like myself, it still is an amazing feeling, an amazing thing that we can even now look back on and relive it. Even for you, it must be so fresh in the memory. Like getting on that first time for Ireland must have been incredible. Yeah, it was. It was over in Houston. I can remember it to this day. It was only a couple of years ago, and yeah. my parents got to travel over and, and relive it with me, or to live it with me. And it was unbelievable. I mean, um, get, getting my first cap for my country was just what what every I think young young kid would dream of. And it, is. it was it was really amazing as well. Um, the game itself wasn't. Wasn't um, full of tries, but we, we yeah. got over the end, over the line <laughs> at the end. So we a got a win, win, a win, a win, record, exactly. And yeah. Um, yeah, it was just obviously um, it was it was my dream come true, and just yeah, it was unreal. Okay, so we can't really talk about the Irish setup without talking about Joe Smith a little bit. Mm. And okay, we've all had coaches going all the way up, and you've had your school coaches and the you know all the representative sides you played, schools and things like that. What was it like going in under Joe? And you know, we've heard to say there's so much that he's like very much like the school teacher. You ha expect certain levels. What was it like? And, and was it a real eye opener? Did it really drive you to become much more better? Yeah, it was. It was totally different and total transition to what what I'd been uh, coached. Like um, I didn't really expect it. I, I didn't expect it at first. To mm -hmm. no one had really told me what what Joe was like. I, I never met met him before and. And uh, straight away from my first camp, I um, I really really got a good insight to his attention to detail and yeah. how, how straight he is with you and how he can improve you if if you if you work with him. Let's just jump to this the last Six Nations. Yeah. And uh, we'll get to the end of it now in a second. But that England game was something special for you. That was really something that uh, you know to top it off with the try at home. And uh, it was really such a, a clinical performance. It was you had a game plan. You knew exactly what you had to do. And you stuck to it, and it was a, a dismantling of an England side that kind of were feeling good about themselves coming over here. 
Yeah, I, I think it was possibly the, the biggest highlight for me for of the Six Nations. Obviously, score scoring my first try um, against England at home it was was a, a, a nice, a nice uh, milestone for me. And I think um, I'll, I'll definitely remember it for for, <laughs> for a while. But um, yeah, definitely the the way we approached the game, I think we didn't let them get into the game mm. too easily, and we knew they were the team to beat if we were going to go on and win the championship. So I think. Um, the manner in which we done it was was unbelievable, and I think that's all down to the the, the the hard work that Joe put into us during the weeks. Okay, we we can't presume in selection everything like that, but like we mm. all know, you're going to get picked. The World Cup, yeah. okay, and you're going to be battling hardy in that. Obviously, I, I've never even been to a World Cup in underage, so uh, I'm not I'm not sure of the schedule or what it's like. So it's maniac. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's absolutely crazy. I've been to two yeah. World Cups and. They are something you you will absolutely never forget, and there's so many pivotal games. And speaking of which, it's that French game is obviously you know we're we're assuming that things go right beforehand, but that French game is definitely something that the game is going or the, the our World Cup could flip flop on. Yeah, and I've I've experienced a, a couple of just watching them on TV, and I know it must be pretty pretty tough to to be in an environment for that long with with, with the team as well. And, and the and the weight of expectation. How do you think that'll go? Yeah, I think the eyes are on the spotlights on us now because we are the, the Six Nations champions and two years in a row. I think a lot of people will be backing us in the Northern Hemisphere to, to be probably the best team there. But I think that only improves us and it really makes us strive for, for more. Perfect. Yes, it's yeah. going to be a great World Cup. Robbie, Please God. thanks Cheers. very much. Thank you. Take care.